very rarely do you find such silence that I can hear a bird from really far away and I'm walking towards that place which is one of the most sacred places out here in Meghalaya. It's called the Sacred Groves of Marflong. Be with me as I continue to take this walk in Meghalaya. As I was walking towards the sacred forest, I met somebody who was working here and his name is uh, Bashan. Bashan and uh, he works here near the sacred groves and he tells me that usually only the weekends there are people uh, otherwise a very less uh, visited place this is. Uh, how long have you been working here? Uh, regularly three years. Okay, what is very special about this place? Uh, this uh, sacred forest. Yeah, what is, what, is, what is the sacredness here in the forest? See, this, uh, this forest, uh, we call it sacred forest because all the rituals regarding this uh, Mauplan kingdom, mm -hmm. they were done here before, inside okay. this forest. Okay, so how old is this forest? This forest, is, uh, it has existed now for almost a thousand years. Okay, even now any rituals happen here in the forest? Not anymore, they didn't perform anymore inside this forest, but they okay. have other places where they perform. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Kublai. So, thanks to him, I'll keep walking. Now, what you see is the grassland around just before I enter the sacred groves. Uh, the sunlight would have given you a very bright picture of the place, but because I'm going to take an hour's trek, I'm glad it's cloudy and I just hope it doesn't rain. But that forest deep there, which is the coniferous forest, and there's not much sunlight penetrating in there, is where I'm going to get in. And um, I will not be able to take you through the whole one hour on my video, but I'm sure I will cover a few beautiful spots. So let's get going. You see this forest? This is a forest that we call this sacred forest. Uh, the reason why we call this forest as a sacred forest is that we, the Kasi, we believe there's a deity in this forest. The deity means like the god. So, <laughs> this, uh, this, the, the name of this deity is uh, Lei Basa. So, Lei means uh, god and Basa means the name of the deity. So, this forest, since it's very old, it's around 800 years old. And the area is 76.88 hectares. So, if we measure in, the, in horizontal, from the starting point to the ending point, it means <coughs> it covers around two to three kilometers. So in this forest, these, uh, these uh, local people from our village, they do this uh, ritual or uh, sacrifice. So there are two big clans in the olden days, since the 80, 800 years old. <coughs> these, uh, these two big clans are the Yang Blak and the Ling Dok Mao So the Ling Dok Mao is still the ruler of this, of our kingdom, the kingdom of Mao <coughs> So the fast part is over there. We call it the Light Turka. That part is uh, is is done the sacrifice by this ling dog or by this young blood, and this part that we will be going is called the pipandi. We, uh, it's, uh, <coughs> it was done by this ling dog mouth plant. So from this forest, you will not take anything. <laughs> so shall we start? Okay, so that is my guide, and his name is uh, Rinka. Rinka, but in short, he's called Shay. Shay. That's what he loves to be called. So what we're going to do is enter that forest um, and there is this sacred this is stone stones. out here and uh, that is a ritual monolith okay monolith. so what is the ritual that happens here a ritual that <coughs> happens here is that they these people mm -hmm. before they go to this forest they used to pray here first okay that means if the deity is allowed or not that means <coughs> the deity will show in the form of an animal okay so if the deity show in the form of a snake that means he's not allowed to do the sacrifice in this forest so if he shows in the form of a, of any animal like fox or jackal, mm -hmm. that means he is allowed to do the sacrifice in this forest. Okay. So you see there are two types of monolith. This is a ritual monolith and the and that one is a monument monolith which has three stones. This okay. has five stones and the other two okay. fall down. Okay. So, so that, apparently what they have here is uh, stones around because uh, culturally their uh, heritage goes back on praying stones which I think is dated back to for most of the uh, cultures across the globe and they have uh, 
actually cherished this culture here and that's where I'm going to get into right now. So let's keep going and I'm going to get a lot of information from my guide Shay and keep you also informed. Uh, the forests here are actually have about 400 flora and fauna and one of the rare ones here is this one. It's called the lily cobra and if you notice it actually has a hood just like a cobra but it is a beautiful flower. See the stems also, it's like the body of snake. Yeah, so that's how it looks like a green snake from far off. So I'm gonna keep exploring a little more on the flora and fauna here. Let's see. This one? This one we call it a teokoila. 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 Teokoila, okay. Teo means flower, koila means the earring. Because in the olden days when they do this kasi folk dance, when people cannot afford and Pure gold, they mm -hmm. use this as a earring. Wow, so this round one only. So, this is what is a local jewelry that's available in the flora of the region. Okay, as I continue to walk, I see that it's a pretty well laid path out here stone path and some beautiful trees around so and my guide is going to explain a little more about the place and take me to some awesome spots so let's keep going you see that, flower? that is the only flower you'll find in this forest what is the flower called in this season mm -hmm. this is an orchid okay so that is a yellow orchid and Apparently, it's only in the season. Yeah. Okay. Because right now it's not flowering time. So in during from June to September, you see so many flowers in this forest. If you're wondering what this fruit is, this is actually the Rudraksha fruit, out of which the Rudraksha mala is made. And what you see up here are the three Rudraksha trees. And there are a few here in these forests. Uh, these are the original Rudrakshas, for your information. Now that is a Kinang Pla, which is, Kinang means insect and Pla means grass. So an insect that looks pretty much like grass, so it can actually camouflage in the greens. Uh, yeah, one of those slow-moving caterpillar families, I guess, but yeah, that's Kinang Pla for you. Now these mushrooms are part of these forests and um, there is no particular name to it as such that my guide knows but these are the ones apparently which survive every season of the year and they are all over. What you're seeing is a pine tree but it's called the Khasi pine tree which is a local one here and in this forest this tall one is the oldest one at 300 years old it's quite an old man out there that's the sape fruit that I tried elsewhere and what you're seeing is the tree that bears this fruit and its scientific name it's called Mycura Indica. Now, go check it out. That's Rhododendro, a scientific name for this tree. Rhododendroi, apparently, corrected me. And it's used for medicinal purposes, especially heart problems. So there is a doctor existing right here in this forest. This variety of the tree is actually Rhododendroi albino. Albomium and it has a red flower. Apparently, the Himalayas have the shrubs, and uh, very rarely you find these find this tree. And it's a flower that is used for medicinal purposes. And if we eat it, it turns purple in our mouth. Okay, that's some um, flower flower that I would like to try. So you see these stones? 
these are like the sitting benches, <coughs> which means uh, in the early days when they when they when there's a war or not, so they used to per, uh, perform a meeting in here, conduct a meeting. Sorry. <coughs> so in this meeting, uh, since it's uh, it's a very sacred, so only the men who work for five years above is allowed, and only the one who has a beard or mustache, the one who does a nap, they consider as a female. It's like the heart of the set. Forest. Of the forest. Okay, so this is the heart of the forest, which is the Pipandi. And this is where people gather and make decisions before the sacrifices. And what is sacrificed is actually an animal. So I'm going to get into a little deeper and understand what animals are here. And I see some really pretty leaves out here. What are these? I don't know, they look like a spoon. Yeah, they look like some nice natural spoons out there. While all of those are tiny stones, there's one big slab here, which is for the chief. Always has to be the best seat, right? So, before I actually reach the sacrifice place, there is a place for a guard uh, who apparently keeps uh, an eye about so that nobody disturbs when the sacrifice is happening. And it's called... Uh, what is it called, Shay? Nong Pahara. Nong that means a god in the local language. So, yes, yeah, a lot of places before I actually get to the sacrifice area. While the whole world is looking for a medicine for cancer, here in this, in this sacred forest lies a tree which is called Texas Begota. And the flower and the fruit is used to treat cancer. No wonder people those days were more healthier than us. Because this has a very big seat. Okay. Yeah. So here is the oldest tree in the forest. The other one that we saw was the oldest pine tree, but this is the oldest that tree, but which does not wear any fruits anymore. It's 800 years old. And this is exactly where the animal is tied. And the only animal that they use for sacrifice is a reddish brown bull. And if you notice, this place is the heart of the forest. And this is the sacrifice area. The large slab stone that you see is where the chief sits. And after the sacrifice, people go touch the stone uh, as a completion of the whole sacrificial uh, ritual. And the stones that you see here is the place where the sacrifice happens. So what is done is the bull is actually cut. The head is cut. The blood is collected and placed right here in the middle. And they pray to their deity, local deity. And apparently they end up seeing a form. If the deity shows up in the form of an animal somewhere around here, then they consider the ritual successful. Just in case the deity shows up as a snake, then what they need to do is actually cover up this whole sacrificial place in such a way that this big slab goes on top of it and that becomes the end of the ritual. And they have to repeat the same ritual another day and take the blessings from the deity. And why do they do this ritual? Just in case anything uh, unhappy or nothing, something that is not good happens, like a plague, which is not good for the villagers, they do this. Or if it is in a form of request for a good harvest, they, may, they can perform this ritual. So that is how people here have lived hundreds of years ago. And if you see... That's how silent it is. All I can hear is the wind, the leaves fluttering in the wind, and birds chirping, and very far away, some other tourists with their guides. So, there are a few more stones and slabs here. They're all seating areas and ritual places around this. So this, if you, know, if you see, is the sacred 
groves of Moflong, which belong to the Moflong Kingdom, and a beautiful place in Meghalaya, which I would say is a must visit. I'm in love with the silence here, but I have to head back home. I just wish this were my home. So I have to head back to the entry point because this is the last point of my trek. As I go back, I'm going to take in all that I saw and this beautiful place and the peace and the serenity and the tranquility from here. Okay. I was uh, hang on a creeper and I was just going down the slope but this is the other one really Check. thick that I can't so. even hold on to and a beautiful spot yeah. for anybody to take a picture <laughs> or hide out or maybe even protect yourself from the rains. So. Awesome. So I spotted another mushroom which is poisonous but looks damn cool. A little white umbrella like thing. My guide helped me spot this little nest on a tree. And what you see are these little birdies which have just popped out. And I have absolutely no clue what these birds are and the little nest is up there on this tree so that's the end of my trek in the sacred forest which is very beautiful and I also happened to meet a family here and the way out if you notice goes to the grasslands which is also green and beautiful and I'm hoping to do some more trek and some more places before end of the day. Keep traveling. <laughs>